All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. So we're going to start talking about covalent nomenclature in this part of our unit. So covalent just is a special way of notating a non-metal bonded with a non-metal. <clears throat> and two non-metals bonding together share electrons. They share those electrons. They don't donate, so there's no real charges what we're talking about here. We're talking about a shared experience. And since they're sharing... They give us some kind of shape. Sharing is caring, so it gives us some kind of shape. And since they're two non two non-metals, they don't form ions anymore. They make molecules. So molecules is a special way to notate you have two non-metals sharing those electrons. Now covalent bonding is a special type of bonding that you need to use prefixes for. But we got to recognize that everything to the right of the staircase is a non-metal so everything to the right of the staircase is a non-metal and that staircase being those metalloid staircases so everything to the right hand side on this way is a non-metal to include our hydrogen friend over here hydrogen is that one really reactive exception to the rule but everything to the right of the staircase is a non-metal to include hydrogen and instead of dropping and swapping like we did with ionics, here we use prefixes. Prefixes are how we understand those element ratios. And these Greek prefixes represent the number of atoms within a compound, giving it its unique element ratio. This gives its identity. In a covalent compound, the number of molecules or atoms inside the molecule, however, are important they're not reducible or they're not changeable because if i change these subscripts here i change who i am just like i did here this is water you need it to survive you're about 70 percent made up of water sitting there on your couch right now however comma this is highly toxic if you drink a lot of it so let's not drink this we need to drink this daily so and the only difference here is that one extra oxygen atom in that molecule. So the ratios make, diff make an importance, they make a difference. So there's no reduction happening here. I wouldn't reduce this like I would for ionics. So we gotta recognize hydrogen's a non-metal, oxygen's a non-metal. We must pay attention to our ratios. And how we represent those ratios is by our Greek prefixes. These prefixes you are responsible for now, so 10 out of 10 recommend you get these done and take a screenshot. Now. One's just that mono prefix, two is di, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, and these help represent the number of atoms in my molecule. Six being hexa, seven is hepta, eight is octa, nine is nona, and ten is deca. So you got your decade, we're ten years, you got your 90-year-old nona, that's why I like to play with it, you're like your grandma, your nona. Eight is octa, like the octopus. Hepta is seven, kind of like your liver or your hepatitis, how I tend to remember it. Hexa is six. Penta, like the Pentagon in Washington, is five-sided. Tetra is our special spicy one, is four. A tripod has three legs. Di is two, and mono is one. And the rules of the road here are you have to name them both with prefixes to make sure you understand the amount of atoms there is one notable exception though there is no mono in my first name so the first part of your molecule does not get mono but now if it's more than one that's fine like this example right here this is dihydrogen di being two monoxide that one oxygen right there and then there is no mono in your first name. So we wouldn't call this compound right here mono carbon dioxide for that one carbon here. No, no, no. It's just carbon dioxide. Because if we say mono carbon dioxide, it's like one, one carbon, which seems kind of redundant. So we just say carbon monoxide. And then you change the last name or your second element the ending goes to IDE that shows it's in a bond. And that's it. That's all. So those are the principles. It's pretty straightforward once you start getting to it. So let's get into some examples and see how it goes. 
So we have dinitrogen tert oxide. Tert is a special way to write tetra, so that way it's not tetra oxide. Sounds a little funny, feels a little weird in your mouth. So it's tert oxide. So I see tert and tetra is the same thing, so that's four. That's a prefix for four. Di right here is a prefix for two. I see two nitrogens and four oxygens in this compound. So I would say nitrogen gets two. You write it in the order they come to in their name. So oxide comes from oxygen and 2O4. Same thing for here. Now I wanna, want you to try it on your own for a second. Hit pause and give it a try. And let's see how we did. Hexa is a prefix for six. So hexa is six. Excuse me. Sulfur is S. Di is a prefix for two. And oxide comes from oxygen. So I have S6O2. Penta is a prefix for five. Tri is a prefix for three. So I have five carbons and three hydrogens for hydride. Hydride is the how we show hydrogen in a bond. Hydride. It's not hydronide, it's hydride. Now let's try these ones down here. Tri means three. Hex or hexa means six. So we have tri-nitrogen in three hexa-oxide. So notice the difference between our first example and this one. They're pretty much the same, except those element ratios are different. Now I have nona-selenium. So nona is our prefix for nine. Nona-selenium tri-bromide. Well, bromide is bromine in a bond. That IDE ending lets me know it's in a bond. And I have three of them, so I have selenium, nine, bromine, three. And of course, if I can go from names to formulas, I have to be able to go to, from a formula to a name. So I want you to use those skills. Quick notes, okay. Use those skills that you have, and that intuitive nature we've developed, to give it a try. Use your prefixes to identify your number of atoms in a molecule and build your name. Pause the video, give it a shot. Let's see how we did. AS is arsenic from our periodic table. AS is number 33 for arsenic. I have one of them. I do not put mono in my first name. First names are just them. Arsenic. Now seven is that weird one with hepta. Seven is hepta, so it's hepta fluoride. Hepta fluoride. Because that hepta is the prefix for seven. And that's how we represent that. And it's not mono arsenic. Nope, nope. It's just arsenic. Just arsenic. Let's try this one. SB. SB is antimony, but how many do I have? I have this two of them here. So that's diantimony. Di meaning two. Diantimony. What means five? Penta. So it's pent oxide. Or here in general chemistry, if you write penta oxide, it looks a little funny, but I'll let you slide with it. So a pent penta oxide, I'll take it. But the preferred tradition is that pent oxide, just so it doesn't sound as funny, at least to me. Anyway, here's two and three. So we have our prefix for two, so that's dihydrogen. Three here, this three is tri, so that's 
trioxide. Showing that oxygen in a bond. Notice one thing. My first name doesn't have an IDE ending. My first name stays the same. All I do is throw on a prefix. My last name, I take the root of it and add IDE plus my prefix. So the thing I'm really changing here is prefixes and ID. My first name still stays the same. I don't add IDE here. It's just its name. Here it's, there's a special way to write those ones, remember. So this is carbon monoxide. Because we don't write ones. So this one down here, that imaginary one, is not represented since the atom's written there. Now let's go here. I see three silicones, so that's tri-silicon, heptasulfide. Because S is sulfur, sulfur come, becomes sulfide in a bond. So sulfide represents that sulfur, and hepta is that seven. Try right here is that three. So then you just work your way and build up your names. And that's the basics of covalent nomenclature. Covalent nomenclature is pretty straightforward. All you had the important part is to recognize your non-metals in a bond. So non-metals are anything to the right hand side of my staircase. On top of that hydrogen exception, that staircase is our imaginary line in the sand that separates our periodic table between metals. Everybody over here and down here, all the way up there, including aluminum. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we move into non non metals. So all of this goodness right here, and including this. So those are our non metals. Then we represent those non metals in their proper ratios by using these Greek prefixes. So ten out of ten. Get yourself some flashcards, go and make an Anki deck, a Quizlet, whatever you need to to start understanding these prefixes here. These Greek prefixes become really important. And the next thing is that you do not put mono in your first name. That's it. That's all. Till next time.